Back at Mom's place, I took a good, hard look at myself. My old faculty advisor was a nasty piece of work, but in a way she was right. I was a fake, a fraud. I didn't deserve the glories of the academic life. I've been trying for too long to get a free ride out of it. But it wasn't too late to turn myself around. And what better place to do it than in the desert? No more using it as a kind of prop for my fantasies of exploding trucks and burning films. I had to admit, Mom needed me, and so did the chickens. I began spending more time with them, learning what makes them tick. I gave them lots of treats, found a local guy to extend the chicken run, and helped Mom with her egg business. I started taking long drives out into the desert. Then I graduated to walks, longer and longer, always with a bottle of water or two. I kept my mind clean and fresh, breathed deeply, nipped distraction in the bud. It seemed to be working. I could explore other places, like finding what the kids call a ghost mall out in the middle of nowhere and not feeling it was overly strange. I could imagine it filled with live people in my head, with music on the speakers. And then, moments later, nothing would be left but the wind. But one day I stumbled into an abandoned radio station. Now that was weird. Christians who played sacred music records and prayed on the air and then just up and left, leaving their crazy piles of garbage behind. What was the message there? A couple of nights later, I had one of my intensely meaningful dreams. It came to me in swirling fragments, so I'll lay it out to you the best way I can. A county administration building in the mist. I was going there to check the ownership records for the station and I found out that it went off the air 20 years ago in the wake of some unnamed scandal, and no one claimed ownership. So, finders keepers, right? And then I'm digging around in the transmitter's mess of tubes and dials and switches. I can't deal with this, so I find a guy to come fix it up and get it back on the air. And somehow I instinctively know how to run this thing. They call it a mixing board and get my still beautiful voice out to my listeners. I decide to use the call letters KMD, for my real name, of course, and take an on-the-air name, too. Preston Love, the voice of the greatest power of all, the purest kind of power. No need for mood-altering substances or megachurches with creepy pastors. Just walk, breathe deeply, let the winds of the cosmos flow through you. I added sound effects like in old-time radio, and also commentary so my listeners could really feel the power. What could possibly be more peaceful than cows grazing in a meadow? Freezing cold, sure, but you'll feel the warmth so intensely once you get inside. A morning walk on the edge of a sleepy village, sublime, feel the power in those springtime breezes. So was Preston Love my alter ego, or was I his? By the end of the dream, I couldn't tell. And then I woke up. I didn't think much about it, but a few days later, Mom's phone rang. She picked it up and called out to me, Who's Preston Love? Anyone you know? What? <laughs> 